can you define this for me? Do not use the word mutation like everyone that has been trying to do today. Define genetic mutation for me. Don't be afraid to speak out. Okay, when something messes up in the genes, how could the genes be altered? What part of the gene would be altered? The uh, amino acid sequence? Not the amino acid sequence. Not the amino acid sequence, but close. It's been a minute since we've looked at that. I forgot what it was called. The nucleotide sequence, right? The sequence of nucleotides could be altered. Anything that alters, anything that alters that nucleotide sequence would cause a genetic mutation. Okay? How is one of the most common ways that mutation arises? What process? Transcription. transcription okay? During transcription, what is transcription? Going from DNA to RNA, specifically what type of RNA? Uh, mRNA. Good job. It's been a long time since we talked about that, but this directly correlates with what we are about to talk about. Okay, so I want to make that connection. <laughs> For a population of organisms to survive long term, what must that population possess? Genetic variation. Genetic variation, great. It must. And that population must have genetic variation. Why? So one. Jackson. So that some of the organisms will be able to have, have traits that allow them to better that better suit the environment that they live in. Okay. Number three, blank refers to an organism's ability to survive, and the trait that allows them to survive is called a blank. What do we call, what, what word do we use to refer to an organism's ability to survive? Yes. Yeah. Fitness. Fitness. Y'all be loud, don't be shy. Um, and the trait that allows them to survive is called an adaptation. adaptation. Good job. Anybody have questions about any of those? Okay, delegate your person. Take out your normal notebooks and pass back the handouts that I passed out to you. Could have been better. I did. bunny population today. Sometimes it makes it a lot easier if we see these things visually. We've talked about them. We've talked about some examples of natural selection, but now we're going to simulate natural selection. We are going to change several variables and see the impact that those have on this population of bunnies. I'm going to get some volunteers to go up at different points during this simulation to control what's going on on the board, okay? Um, just go ahead and raise your hand if you're interested in volunteering so I know who I can call on in just a second. Who wants to go up and help me run the simulation? Okay. Okay. Okay, okay I have my volunteers. So I'll call y'all up in just a second, okay? Um, you can go ahead and start us. Not yet. Here, only you need your sheets. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the simulation. Before we can do anything with the simulation, what do you think we need to do first? Press uh, play again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you need to. You, we need to become familiar with all of the variables that we could change and how the simulation runs, right? Okay, Elena's going to help us with that. So, look at your questions. The first five questions we're going to be being able to answer just based on how the simulation is supposed to be ran. Okay? So, number one, 
what are some variables that you have control over in the simulation? Elena, they can't see this super well, so you're gonna have to walk them through this a little bit, okay? And read to them what's on the screen that we're gonna be able to change, okay? So what are some variables that you could have control over in the simulation? Brown fur, long tail, long teeth. Okay, so we have those three mutations. What else do we have? Uh, Look on here, Elena. You can come on the other side. You can cross it. Uh, you can do the, like, what is this? Environment, what is it, hot, cold? Okay, so we have the equator environment, the Arctic environment. What do we have above that? What variables are there? Selection factor. Selection factor. And we have? Wolves and Wolves and food and? No. Okay, let me ask all this question because this is going to come up and it's super important. We have three selection factors listed, correct? Wolves, which what would we call those? Predators. Predators. We have food. And then what's the third one? This is really important. None. Okay? Let's revisit that none in just a second when you see what happens in the simulation because there's been some confusion about what the difference between wolves, food, and none is, and what that none provides you with, okay? So, let's look at number two. What does it say for number two? What happens to the body population if a friend is never added? What happens to the body population if a friend is never added? So, Elena, push play again and push the play button. With just, oh, yeah, you're good. factors because it's not intuitive what that none really means so we would, in a normal population we would have had limited resources right but when it says the selection factor is none what are we to assume from that that there's, there's no predators. predators that we have no predators we have an unlimited source of food okay because it's it's kind of misleading because we're going to add food in a second and so it makes you feel like when we have a selection factor of none that we are that we don't have any food that's not true in this mode when we have no selection factors chosen then we have unlimited resources 
okay, which is why the bunnies are able to take over the world. What is our next question to ask us? Uh, what happens if you add food? What happens when you add food is a selection factor. So Elena, play again. Isn't that what happens whenever bunnies We need to add a friend so they don't die off too. Oh, okay. And then add food. Okay, look what happens now. Yes. We are actually going to talk about that when we get into ecology. <laughs> the introduction of a non-native species, we'll talk about that and the impact that has. Okay, so the bunnies are still reproducing, correct? Oh. Oh, food. What the heck? Okay. That's super, that's super important. We'll look at that in a second and talk about it, okay? So write down your answer. What happens when you add food is a selection factor. Now that we're down to one individual, what's going to happen? Okay. Now, Elena, for our next question, what do you all need to know the answer to? What's the difference between the Arctic environment and the equator? So let's, so we can stop this one. Go to the Arctic environment. And guys, when you answer this question, be specific. Don't just state the obvious and add a, yeah. Well, let's add a friend. Does he have a friend? Here, so let's reset. Okay. What's going to happen in this scenario where we just have the bunnies in the Arctic? It's going to happen. The, we're going to get a cold in the It's cold. We're going to freeze. Let's try jackrabbit. Okay, so we know what's going to happen here. What is number five? We already visited this question, so this should be easy for you to answer. But number five asks, what is genetic mutation? And what are the three mutations you can add to your bunny population? What are the three that you see up here? Okay, brown fur. So the color of the fur, the length of their tail, and what else? The length of their teeth, okay? Thank you, Elena. All right. Do you mind when we're on the next one? Okay, for our next experiment, or for our first experiment, rather. What are we going to be looking at in our first experiment? What does it ask us? No. What does the experiment ask? What are we trying to figure out? How is the fur color trait influenced by natural selection, right? Okay. It has a place for you to write a hypothesis. Natural selection will favor traits that write in your hypothesis. We're looking. Both. We're looking. How is the fur color trait influenced by natural selection? So we're going to look at all of those selection factors that we have, all of the variables that we can change, and we're going to look at how fur color is influenced by natural selection. So you can write your hypothesis based on any of it, or you can do a general hypothesis that will apply to all. Well, it starts as an example, so you can just finish it. So don't write it. You just write at the end of your right. Cool. Yeah. Unfortunate today, but. Yeah, that's easy. There were a couple of things. I was there. Okay, 
So y'all are going to have to walk Nehemiah through this simulation and tell her what she needs to do. It's much more difficult for her to read the instructions herself when she's up here. So let's read them as we go along with Nehemiah and help her understand what she needs to change on her end so we can see. So Nehemiah, go ahead and start by resetting. Yeah, you can push play again and then reset everything. Okay, push pause, do you mind? Every time you make a, yeah, there you go. Okay, what does it want her to do first? I'm gonna tell her what her first instructions are. Add a friend. Okay, so we need to add a friend, and we need to add a brown fur mutation to the bunny population. Okay, now, let, you can go ahead and push play, do you mind? Look and see if you can figure out why it says mutation coming. Don't say anything right now. Why does it say mutation coming? Okay, in order for us to pass the mutation onto offspring, that mutation has to occur in the gametes, right? And so in order for us to have a offspring that has that mutation, we have to first reproduce to create that offspring, right? That's why it doesn't start out with a brown bunny. Down here at the bottom, Dehemiah, walk them through that graph. Tell them what they're seeing at the bottom. Okay, so first, the light blue is brown fur. And then with the red one, it starts right here. That's what white fur is, like a blue. But you see that. And then the black one oh. is the total. So it's all the So the black one is the total of the entire bunny population. The red is our white fur bunnies, and the blue is our brown fur bunnies. So what's happening to those populations? They're growing. They're increasing, right? Both our white bunnies and our brown bunnies. Why is our brown bunny population smaller than our white bunny population? Okay, someone said because it's recessive. What else? There still isn't a predator. Drew? It's not like found as Okay. What did we start with? Why bunnies? Okay. In this population, if there isn't a selection factor for one or the other, are the brown bunnies ever going to get to a point where they are the same? No. Because they started out as a de at a deficit, right? We introduced that mutation into the population. Not only is well, actually, the brown fur is dominant. I think also recessive. So okay. The white fur is recessive. Okay, so now look at the second part and be sure to be writing notes down in your notebook as we go through this because you're going to have to put, pull all of this together to draw your conclusions. And it may be difficult for you to remember what happened in each scenario unless you write yourself down some notes about it, okay? You might want to Okay, so now someone walk DMI through the next part. What does she need to do now? Start over. Start over. And? Brown fur mutation with friend. So we need a friend, we need a brown fur mutation. Wolf. And what are we going to change about this one? Wolf. We're going to add wolves, but be careful. Tell DMI specifically what she needs to do. Okay. So y'all let her know when you think that the population is overpopulated, what we consider overpopulated, and let her know when she needs to add those wolves. Notice our graph again. Most of our population is what bunny? White. The white fur bunnies, right? What's happening to the brown fur population? It's increasing. Now. Let's wait one more round and then we'll introduce the wolves and see what happens. Make sure you write down your observations. Okay, now let's we'll introduce the wolves. Pay close attention to the behavior of the wolves. Oh, they're so cute. 
Hey, Elizabeth made a very important conclusion. Elizabeth, what did, or observation rather, what did you observe, Elizabeth? I said they eat mostly the white bunnies, but they do eat some brown bunnies. Okay, the wolves eat mostly the white bunnies, but they do eat some brown bunnies. Okay. What does the mind do next? You sure? What's the next? What's the next one? We're not quite to the Arctic environment yet. What are we doing? Hey, so now we need brown fur to stay there, right? Okay, so let's reset. We're going to do a brown fur mutation, but what variable have we changed this time? Our selection factor is now food rather than predators. So now we need a friend, we need a brown fur population or mutation, and we need to select food as our selection factor. Okay? On the right hand side of the MI. There you go. holding steady? No. no. What's it doing? It's going up and down. Why is it going up and down when all we did was change the selection factor and put food as the selection factor? Okay, what did you say, Nick? I mean, I'm sorry, Josh. I said limits to resources. So some of the bodies get the food mm -hmm. while others do not. Meaning that, like, but why does it fluctuate? Yes. Because whenever they like have, uh, like I don't know if it's a little bit, but like whenever they have new bunnies, only some of those survive, and then so it goes up, and then some of those survive. As long as we have two bunnies, what's going to keep happening? Reproduction. And if we produce more than the environment can handle, which we are going to when we have the selection factor of food, right? we are producing more baby bunnies than the environment can support because we don't have enough food for them. So the population is going to keep going up and down until we only are left with one bunny and then what's going to happen? Okay, they're going to go extinct or unless until they run out of the food altogether. Okay, so now what do we need to do for the last set? Reset. Change the setting so that you have a brown fermentation in, in an Arctic environment. What's going to change here? What do you anticipate changing here? Okay, so now our selection pressure is going to be different because our environment is different. So now our bunnies who have white fur may have an advantage over those bunnies who have brown fur, correct? Okay, let's look at this. What is our selection factor for this run going to be? Wolves. wolves. So we're going to wait until they are overpopulated, and then we're going to <coughs> add in the wolves, correct? Mm -hmm. We'll let them reproduce one more time, and then we'll introduce the wolves. Again, watch the behavior of the wolves. Make a note over who the wolves are eating, okay? Okay. 
and write down your observations. And let's look at number six. Number six asks, based on the four simulations you ran, describe what happened to your population and answer the experimental question. What is our experimental question? Okay, good job. How is the fur trait influenced by natural selection? Um, it says consider what happens in both environments and what happens when there are no predators. What's the most important word that you see in that next sentence? Evidence. evidence. Provide evidence from the simulation to support your conclusions. You're going to need to do this in your notebook beneath your observations that you made. So write a conclusion and answer to that question and provide evidence from the simulation to support your conclusion. Okay? If you need help, let me know. If you need to ask your neighbor for help, you can do so. Jackson, you want to run our next one? Okay, if you're still writing the end of your conclusion, you can finish up. Let's introduce the next part. So for experiment B, it asks how long tooth length influenced, how is tooth length influenced by natural selection? So here, it says following the guidelines from experiment A, so we're going to follow the same steps that we did in experiment A, determine when long teeth provides an advantage to the bunny population. What would we call long teeth if it provided us an advantage? Dominant. An adaptation. <laughs> Run simulations in a variety of settings and write the answer to your experimental question and then provide evidence for your answer from the simulation. So we're going to follow those same steps that we did last time, but where it said brown fur, now what are we going to be changing? The long teeth, okay? So go ahead and reset, Jackson. And then pause. Okay, so in our first scenario, what do we need to do? We need to add a friend. 
And we need to add the mutation. Again, why is there going to be some delay before we see any long teeth rabbits? Okay. Yep, you can push by. The only difference we have here, we have our white bunnies with short teeth and our white bunnies that have those long teeth, right? Um, the long teeth are a little bit more difficult to see. It may help you to see that to watch the graph this time. The pink line is our long teeth bunny. Uh, the green line is our short teeth bunny. And if you look at their face, their face is a little bit different shape. It's hard to see the teeth from near distance, but it's easier to see the shape of their face. Y'all see that? Yeah. The one with that, the bunnies that have the long teeth, their face looks kind of triangular. Like pointy like a mouse in the front. Okay, so what's going to happen to our bunny population now? It's going to overpopulate the world, okay? So let's see, what do we need to do next? Okay, so start over. We're going to add our mutation again. And once we're overpopulated, we're going to introduce the predator. So again, it takes some time for that mutation to show in the population, right? Those bunnies are going to reproduce. So the red line is the one that was after mutation? Mm -hmm. The red line um, is long teeth, actually. The pink line is long teeth. The green line that's going up right underneath the black line is our short teeth bunnies. Our short teeth are going to stay above our long teeth for a little while because we started out with more of them. Okay. Unless there's a selection pressure, those are not going to switch places. We'll always have less of our mutated bunnies than we do of our normal bunnies. A selection pressure, so like our selection factor, a selective pressure is anything that causes a change in our bunny population. So if one bunny uh, feature or phenotype is chosen or selected or favorable over another, that's a selection pressure, whatever's causing that. It could be our food source, it could be our um, environment, it could be our wolves, and this. All of those are selection pressures. Okay, what do we need to do now? Add our wolves. When we add our wolves, what do you think is going to happen? Okay, in a second when the wolves leave, let's watch our graph. We're zoomed in on our graph right now, so it's difficult to see, but watch your graph and see what happens. Okay, that's a good question. When do the wolves leave? In the, in the scenario that we had before where we had white bunnies and brown bunnies, when did the wolves leave? When there were very few white bunnies, right? Why? Because their food source was gone, okay? These wolves are going to travel around and look for a food source because they have the ability to do that. And so if they're in an area where they've depleted their food source, they're going to move to a different area and look for food elsewhere. What happened when that bunny population began coming back up with the white bunnies in the scenario we looked at before, in experiment A, what happened? The wolves came back because they're like, oh, look, I see those bunnies. I think I'm hungry again. Okay, and they're going to come back to that area. Look at your graph right here that you see coming up. Do you see a difference in the selection pressure for our short teeth or and our long teeth, or are they being impacted the same way? The short or green and the long or pink? They're, they're the same, right? They're being affected the same. So is there an advantage against wolves for these bunnies who have long teeth? No. no. Okay. So let's look. What happens next? We're going to change the settings. What are we going to do this time? Do what? Okay, now we're going to have the selection factor as a food source. So Jackson, reset. We need our long tooth or our long teeth mutation again, right? 
We need a friend so they don't all die. And we need food. Pay close attention to what happens now, okay? Remember to look for their head shapes so you can tell which ones are long tooth and which ones aren't. And then you can use the graph to confirm what you think is going on. In the middle of that graph right now, what happened? The population of long teeth bunnies went higher than our original short teeth bunnies, right? What does that tell you about this mutation? It's an adaptation. What does that mean? Okay, it has given our population of bunnies an advantage, right? The set of bunnies that have this mutation have an advantage over those who do not have this mutation. So if I wanted to, to draw a conclusion from this, I could say that the bunnies who have long teeth are more blank than the bunnies who have short teeth. What? Fit. They have a higher fitness, right? Does it have anything to do with how strong the bunnies are? Does it have anything to do with the size of the bunnies in this scenario? No. no. Fitness just means more fit for your environment at that time. Whatever the selective pressure is, doesn't mean that you're stronger, doesn't mean that you're bigger, doesn't mean that you're smaller. Whoever is more fit for the environment, depending on the selective pressure that is in place in that environment. Everybody cool with that? Okay. What's our last scenario? Okay, what else can we change? We've done food, we've done wolves. Now we can change the environment. If we change the environment using what you've known to happen in the other scenarios, what do you think is going to happen in this? Do you think our long teeth mutation is going to provide our bunnies with an advantage? No. no. But let's see just to make sure. What should our selective pressure in the Arctic be? Wolves. So we'll wait for the population to increase. And then we'll introduce our wolves. <coughs> okay, the long teeth went down. Do you think that the short teeth did as well and we just can't see it? Yeah. Jackson, zoom out on that graph for me. Thank you. Okay, see the same pattern is being shown both in the short tooth and the long tooth. So we know that the wolves do not put a selective pressure on the bunnies in terms of their phenotype right now, right? They prefer, they don't care what size teeth these bunnies have, short or long, they're just as yummy. Okay, look at your the next question, for number seven, you're going to do a CER. You're going to make a claim. What is your claim going to relate to? Okay, that question. How is tooth length influenced by natural selection? And you were to determine when long teeth provides an advantage to the bunny population. So your claim is going to be what? Don't say the details, just explain to me what you're going to see or what you're going to write about. When, don't be specific, when the long teeth bunnies have a greater advantage. That's going to be your claim. You're going to provide evidence based on what we saw in the simulation. And then 
do your reasoning, right? Relate your evidence back to your claim. How do those relate to one another? Explain why your evidence supports your claim. So we're just supposed to put like, the claim is supposed to be if when the long teeth have mm -hmm. more advantage or mm -hmm. just when the long teeth are added? No, when the long teeth have an advantage. When do the long teeth have an advantage? Because remember, natural selection is going to show when they have an advantage. Mm -hmm. If neither of them have an advantage, we're not going to see natural selection occurring, right? Mm -hmm. When the selection pressure is their food, or when the selection factor is their food, the amount of food or the availability of food, however you want to work that. Mm -hmm. When you finish your CER, go ahead and move on, skip number eight, and answer your post-lab analysis. So what we did today is demonstrated four factors that result in evolution. You saw these throughout the simulation. Now I need you to write down how you observed that factor in this simulation, okay? Tomorrow, if I would say I would say look up here and if and give a reason why that would happen. So what's the condition in which what condition would have to occur for that to be true? to apply these four factors that we are addressing today in the simulation to human populations. We're going to be looking at the biology of skin color and how we have, as a human population, experienced selective pressures so that our skin color or organisms with different skin colors are distributed differently globally. Does that make sense? You're taking it home to finish, and you're turning it in tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Help them eat a different food for some that the other bunnies couldn't. Anybody have questions for me? I, do I need to help anybody walk through their CER? So something that you observed today during the simulation that shows this, so the potential for a species to increase 